Reddit, what is the most satisfying no you've ever given? Story 1. There are several no's in this story. My ex-wife had started having an emotional affair with another guy. Nothing physical, I'm fairly sure, but still wrong. She had been destroying our marriage for a while and had basically just been acting single for several months. I confronted her about the emotional affair and told her that it was either me or him, but she couldn't have both. She told me that she wasn't going to give him up and that I was going to have to deal with it. I immediately said no and filed for divorce two days later. Upon letting her know I filed for divorce, she told me to get my stuff and get out. Again, I promptly responded with no. I paid the bills. I was the one taking care of our child and I wasn't the one who had messed up our marriage. I told her she had three days to get her crap out or I was leaving it outside. She complied. Later down the road, she asked if I thought there was any chance of us getting back together and this was the best no of all. Hell no, my life is so much better now. This all happened 10 months ago and our divorce will be final in two months. I have a domiciliary status of our child and usually have her five to six days a week. I have a great job, a brand new house, and a great life. Meanwhile, the bitter ex has resorted to stripping, getting too drunk to watch her daughter and trying to screw my life up any chance she gets. However, the hurt is gone and I merely feel sorry for her. Best no of my life, as I actually got my life back and rid myself of a toxic relationship. Story 2. I used to be a chef. At this particular place, which was quite upmarket, I was the sous chef. We made food that required a lot of work. The average person would have five to six courses in a sitting, and it was all very time-consuming. Every day, we'd start at 8 a.m. to prepare for dinner and finish around 11 p.m., just to give you an idea. Anyway, one night after everyone else had cleaned down and we were out in the back having a beer and a durry, I was pottering around the kitchen, ordering things and writing lists and some friends of the owner came in pissed drunk and demanded to see the menu. The bar was open, but the kitchen was done and dusted, not just closed, clean, done. The waitress who was still there asked me if we could do it, knowing full well that we couldn't, but asked anyway because she was doing her job. I say no, but I can put something together for them on the house. It was some cheese and bread and even a few desserts. You got to look after the drinkers, right? That's hospitality. Plus, I cannot ask my crew to fire up the kitchen again because it'll take an hour at the very least to bring the kitchen back online. We wouldn't be able to use half the kitchen and F off. We've been here for 14 hours and I can't do that to my team. Even offering what I was offering represented another few hours there for me cleaning and finishing my other duties. But I'm being nice here. So I give them the compromise of cheese and dessert. No, the waitress comes back. They don't want dessert. They want dinner. I compromise again and say I'll cook them all a steak with sides and sauce and all that good stuff. And I've got some fish if they want to eat that. And I can do a veggie dish too. I'll hook these guys up. They're going to love it. Personally, if I was hammered and a place was willing to cook me steak at 11.30 p.m., I'd be stoked. But I wasn't raised by wolves. But again, no, they want the full menu. Just no, we can't just knock that up in 20 minutes. The full menu takes hours of preparation and a full crew in a fired up kitchen. You can't have it. You can't. If you were here just two hours ago, you could have had the full braised flamingo tongue and pickled what's-its or whatever the hell you wanted. Now, you can get fed. Happy to do that. It's my pleasure. The waitress once more tells them that the full menu is off, but the chef will cook you a lovely meal, but still, they say no. Please make them understand what they are actually requesting. So the waitress goes back and once more tries to explain the situation and why certain practical realities are preventing us from offering the complete menu. Then some drunk idiot from the table actually rolls up to the pass and calls me a lazy a-hole to my face. The guy who is offering to cook you a steak dinner on the house in his 15th hour of a shift is a lazy a-hole, huh? Okay, so I turned my back on her, turned the lights off in the kitchen and went outside and sat down for a beer to complete my ordering and have a giggle with my workmates. I just ignored them, apologized to the waitress because essentially she now had a situation to deal with, but yeah, not happening. Then they tried to take the earlier offer of steak and fish. This was the final crushing no that I took so much pleasure from. Not actually delivered to their face, but again, the beleaguered waitress. And no matter how mad they got, there was no one else to help them achieve their goals of eating nice food. They had every chance to be reasonable and they squandered those chances until it was too late. They could have chosen prime steak and Bernays sauce, but they chose defeat. Of course, they were livid as only drunk peasants with too much money can be and they had a word with the owner the next day. And like the pathetic cash cow he was, he chewed me out about it.
but it was worth it. Story 3. I was in the middle of a math test when my friend came to the classroom and told the teacher I had to meet with the vice principal. I went out into the hallway and my friend told me it was a BS excuse to get me out of class so we could go get high. I had smoked weed a few times before but I didn't want to do it during school, so I said no and went back to class a few minutes later. At the time, my mom had been diagnosed with stage 3 lung cancer and had been in the hospital for the last two months. Ten minutes later, a teacher came to class and told me my neighbor was there to pick me up. My heart nearly stopped. She explained to me that my mom had taken a turn for the worse. We got to the hospital and she could barely speak. Half an hour later, she was gone. That was five years ago now and it still plays on my mind. If I had said yes to my friend's request, I would have missed my last chance to say goodbye to my mom. I'm so glad I didn't. Story 4 So growing up, my stepmom gave me a ton of crap. Basically, everything was my fault. I couldn't do anything right. And if my step-siblings messed up, it was my fault. My dad raised me to be respectful, so I always took these tongue lashings and tried to move on with my day until the next one came in a few hours. Well, one day, about three weeks before I moved out, I was 21 at the time, and I just sort of snapped. She was yelling at me for the bookcase being disorganized, it wasn't alphabetical, and said I need to apologize and fix it right now, and I just said no. This escalated into a 40-minute long screaming match where she called me an ungrateful son of a lunatic. Mom is literally certifiably insane. And I just laid out the past 11 years of injustices on her. While I don't regret it one bit, it breaks my heart a bit looking back because of my dad. My dad is a strong, natural patriarch and taught me everything I know about being a good man. My stepmom is a great wife and a good mother, just a crappy stepmom. I will always remember the helpless look on my dad's face as his only son and the love of his life screamed at each other with utter hate, faces inches apart and seconds from coming to blows. Story 5. My company really wanted to give me a promotion, but I love my current job and the team that I work with. The thing is, they take advantage of a member of my team by paying her a ridiculously unfair wage for the duties she performs. So I interviewed and told them that if they took care of her, I'd take the job. I even offered to do it at the wage I earn now, which is well below the going rate for the new role. The interview went great and they offered me the job. But when I asked them what they were going to do to fix my friend's salary, in typical corporate fashion, they said there was nothing they could do. So I shocked them right out of their suits with a flat-out no. They practically choked on their panini breakfast. It was awesome. Story 6. I had a customer come in the other day, obviously strung out on something, who wanted to return a battery that had a strict 90-day return policy. I told him that I couldn't take it back without a receipt that stated he bought it within 90 days. I bought it a year ago, just take it back, he yelled. I calmly explained that our policy was very clear and that I couldn't make an exception. He then spent the next five minutes calling me every name in the book. I just stood there smiling as a line built up behind him. When he finally paused to take a breath, I said, The door is right there whenever you're finished. He stormed out only to come back in 30 minutes later to blast me out again. Sir, as I've told you before, the door is located right there. You're free to use it whenever you're finished yelling at me over something I have no control over. I even offered to let him exchange it for a different battery, but he just wanted his money back. I assumed to buy more drugs or get his next fix. I'm not sure what he expected me to do. I'm just a cashier. I don't make the rules, but I'm not going to let someone yell at me and call me names just because they're unhappy. I'm glad he finally left, but I'm sure he'll be back. Story 7. I lost thousands of dollars, around 7k, intending to marry a woman child 10 years ago. And I lost it all because we called off the wedding so close to the event. Had we gone through with the wedding, a financial mess would have eventually resulted from divorce, so I just forced myself to look on the bright side. A couple of months later, she received two $1,000 checks, 2K in total, from a travel insurance company covering the loss on the honeymoon we were supposed to take. The policy was in both our names. This was also about a week or two after I found out, before I could finish sweeping the floors in the apartment she moved out of, that she was currently sleeping with a friend of mine. They eventually got married and had kids. There was a level of shadiness that made the time overlap never sit right with me. He lost a lot of friends as a result of that. She reached out to a mutual friend of ours and asked them if she could leave a check in my name with them. The check was received from the travel insurance company to cover the loss of the honeymoon. She wanted me to sign it over to her. 
Her thinking was that she would pay for the honeymoon and I would pay for everything else, since I made more money than her and everything else cost more. She did not understand that, in a relationship, expenses, savings, and debt are all fungible. I made more than her, but that did not mean that I picked out the flowers, the band, the limos without her input. I told our mutual friends that she should not have involved them and that it was rude of her. If she wished for me to sign the check over to her, she could go ahead and call me and ask me herself. So she called. Hey, it's Jane. I have a check here in your name. Me. Did you receive the email of itemized expenses I incurred as a result of calling off this wedding and you being almost $25,000 in credit card debt with nearly 30% APRs across three cards? Did I mention that part? Jane. No, I'm not reading your emails. I don't care what you lost. I want my money. Me. I know you think it's your money even though we'd agreed to pool our money for all of the costs. I know you don't care what I lost. This is why I couldn't spend the rest of my life with you. So, in regard to signing over the $1,000 check to you, I think you should hand me the check to help cover the expenses I incurred because you needed to have a $5,000 wedding band, $2,000 in flowers. And then, she hung up on me. So the most satisfying no I ever gave, I never got the chance to say. It was glorious. It doesn't end there. Four years later, my father calls me and tells me there is a state website for unclaimed funds. He said my name was on there and to check it out. I look into it and lo and behold, it's the $1,000 in my name from the travel insurance. I just figured she'd forged my signature and cash the check. Wouldn't have put it past her. Well, I hunted that money down. Took me a few months to get the proof and get through to the right people, but I got my check. And what did I do with it? I took my current wife out to dinner at Del Frisco Double Eagle Steakhouse, ordered a bottle of Stag's Leap Artemis, bought her flowers, went to a Broadway show, and celebrated her for being just an awesome, beautiful person. Best thousand dollars I ever spent on the only woman I ever truly loved. Story 8. I worked in a 10-person automotive design company for four years as a 3D modeler. I was the only 3D modeler at the time. The clients loved me and gave me job offers and I had taken over all the IT work in the studio. For some reason, my boss stopped sending me out to clients, which was strange because they had promised to keep requesting me. Instead of my 3D modeling job, he had me run the CNC milling machine, which is pretty dull and boring work. I requested a raise as my performance had been good and I had taken on much more responsibility than my job would normally have entailed. He claimed I was currently an overpaid milling operator and should not complain about my pay. Obviously, I was pretty pissed, but I stayed at the company, planning to send out some resumes and then quit when I got a better offer. About a week later, I made a mistake during a milling job, not on purpose, and got an angry phone call from my boss at 10 p.m. I went into work the next day to fix the mistake and had it fixed after about 30 minutes. My boss came in 30 minutes later and started an argument about how dare I make a mistake like that. At this point, I no longer cared about my job as I had had enough, so I made the comment that not everyone can be as perfect as he is at operating the milling machine and that I am sure he had never made a mistake like this ever before. One hour later, we had agreed on instant termination and I packed up my stuff and said my goodbyes to the team. They all couldn't believe that I had been let go about such a stupid matter and were asking who would be doing the IT and modeling in the future. It was not my problem, so I told them to ask the boss. Of course, instant unplanned termination meant there was no documentation for any of my IT work and no one had a chance to ask me how to do anything related to my job. Evil laugh. And now the best part, I returned to my home and made three calls to competitor companies. The company I worked for was known to be really good at work during crunch time, so they all seemed very eager to get to know me. Straight on the phone, I got invited to come and do some test work for two of the companies in the next two days so straight away my mood was lifted. Then there was a knock at the door. My boss had come to my home to tell me the computers were doing some weird stuff and if I could come back and fix it for him. Me telling him to get screwed was the best thing that could have happened to me after the whole ordeal. The panicked look on his face made it clear that he had recognized his mistake and that two whole departments had just collapsed the moment I had walked out the door. Also, he would have to do all the milling work instead of doing his management work as there was no one else in the company who knew how. I aced the job interviews at both of the other companies and now have a good position earning almost double of what I did before. That fight and the resulting job change was the best thing that could have happened to me. Story 9. I have been a renter most of my adult life. The second to the last place I rented was a nice old house with a huge yard. We really liked this house. 
The landlord, Bob, was a young man with a wife and baby. As long as we paid the rent even close to on time, he didn't bother with us. We hardly ever saw him. At the time, my children were older, junior high ages, and they wanted a dog. The landlord had told us when we moved in that pets were okay, as long as he was given notice. After two years, I finally gave in and we got a dog, a large shepherd slash Malamute puppy. I notified the landlord. The landlord then did a 180 degree turnaround, wanted monthly inspections, increased the rent, and generally freaked the hell out. After a few months, he gave us 30 days notice to leave. After much scrambling, I found a house, slightly bigger, fenced yard, and close to our price range. We signed a lease and moved in a big hurry because the new school year was beginning at the end of the 30 days. While we didn't trash the place, we didn't go out of our way to make sure it was neat as a pin either. Needless to say, we didn't get the security deposit back. Side note, I have never, ever, gotten a security deposit back from a landlord no matter how bad or good the condition of the house was in when we left. Fast forward six months. The kids had left for school already when a snowstorm blew in. My workplace closed for the day, even though the snow was supposed to melt off by the afternoon. I had an unexpected day off, an entire day to myself. I got myself another cup of coffee and started playing video games. After about an hour, a large pickup truck pulled into the driveway. Out of this truck stepped a young woman carrying her baby. I recognized this woman as the wife of my former landlord. I was very puzzled as we had not heard from these folks since the move. I invited her in, offered her coffee, and she proceeded to tell me the sad story of what had happened over the last six months to our former home. She said her husband had evicted us because he was worried about the dog doing damage to the property, which didn't happen, and that he had agreed to sell the place to someone under a land contract. The folks he agreed to sell to apparently paid only half the deposit, had never paid any rent, and had started parking and repairing cars all over the big, beautiful yard, tearing it up completely. She ended the story by asking me if we'd be interested in moving back to the house we had liked so much. After about 30 seconds, I told her that we had signed a year's lease at this house, so no, we would not be able to move back into the home that her husband had evicted us from. Most satisfying no I've ever said. Story 10. I pretty much told one of my co-workers to go kick rocks when she kept calling me during my vacation to see if I'd work her shifts. Let me set the stage. We had a co-worker who was only scheduled one or two shifts a month, but was notorious for trying to switch or call off entirely at the last possible moment. I usually got those hours as I was part-time and had nothing else to do with my time. My boss loved it when I volunteered to come in, so things were all right. Fast forward to my first year with the company, and I booked off several days for a convention about two, three hours away. I did this about six months in advance, and the boss approved it because it was so far out. She scheduled the problem coworker to take a couple of those days. Up until the day before I was to leave, this wasn't a problem. But then she called me during my last shift before my trip, begging me to take her shifts because something came up. Supposedly, her daughter was participating in a surprise horse competition. This was, of course, a load of crap, but I didn't call her out on it. Instead, I told her that I had planned this and paid a lot of money ahead of time that I couldn't get back. My boss took the call and told her tough luck come in or don't come back. I went on my trip the next day and everything seemed okay, but it would have been had the coworker not kept calling me incessantly wondering where I was. She still thought I could come in for her, even though I had said no repeatedly. This started at 8.30 in the morning when some of the other people in my room were still sleeping and it continued well past noon. In total, she called me I think 10 times that day and sent me numerous texts with thousands of question marks and exclamation points asking me where I was. I told her several times that I was on vacation and that I would not be coming in for her. She finally threatened to tell the boss and I called her bluff, telling her to go ahead and do so. I reminded her that the boss had discussed this with her already and had okayed me to leave. I didn't hear from her for the rest of the day, but then she called me on day two and that's when I lost it. Once again, it was early in the morning. We were out at a rave the night before and completely exhausted. Even my mother, who is usually overbearing as hell, knew not to call me until later during the day when I wasn't a con zombie. But this co-worker didn't care. She called me at 8 o'clock in the morning, even earlier than the day before. I picked up the phone, answered groggily, and before I could even finish saying hello, she started squawking at the top of her lungs. Where are you you were supposed to be here to cover for me today because I have a thing at blah 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 that I just made up. 
I was tired, my feet were already hurting, my roommates were giving me the stink eye, and I had had enough. So I said to her, no, I'm not coming in for you, I wasn't going to yesterday, and I never said I was. What I did say was that I was going on a vacation for several days and that I would be two, three hours away and therefore unable to cover for anyone. I told you that six months ago and continued to tell you for those entire six months. I told you the day before I left. I told you yesterday. The boss told you. The boss gave me the appropriate time off. I went to bed at three in the morning last night, and so did the five other people who are now listening to me explain this to you like you are a toddler. You have woken us all up. I have had enough. I am calling the boss. Please work your shift. I hung up and called the boss, who was furious for being woken up on her day off and for having to deal with this difficult co-worker yet again. She told me she would handle it and call me back. I didn't receive that call for a good half an hour, so I wasn't sure how badly the co-worker got reprimanded. The boss assured me that the issue was resolved and that I should enjoy the rest of my vacation without any further work-related interruptions, which I did. That witch of a co-worker never apologized for her behavior. Story 11 My wife volunteered at a place where she routinely had contact with the public. She met new people all the time, but really clicked with one woman in particular. They went out for coffee, found they had a lot in common, and agreed both couples should see a movie or have dinner or something together. One evening, the woman called my wife and said, I think we are right near your house. If you are free, can we drop by and our husbands can meet? Sure. We talked for a bit and I could see why my wife got along with the woman so well. But then suddenly the guy handed me some kind of brochure. It was Amway, by another name, one of the spinoff companies. Nope. Sure, cool, just take a look, okay? The next day, the woman called again. Hey, the regional manager happens to be in town. He's really a great person. And I think you should meet him and you can tell him what you think of the stuff we showed you. Nope. I'll put everything you left me outside my door if you need it. We're not interested and there's nothing to talk about. Half an hour later, the doorbell rang. And the manager, who I had never met before, found our door unlocked and walked in, followed by our new friends. I don't really think you understand the opportunity you are passing up here. I said the thing that every homeowner should say at least once. Get the F out of my house. You don't need to be rude about it. You haven't heard me saying no yet, so obviously I do. They skulked out and that was that. Greatest no I have ever uttered. Thanks for watching till the end. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more of these ridiculous stories. Love you all and stay safe out there in that crazy world. Much love. Peace.